Hey, happy Friday, guys. Um, I have a truth this morning that the Holy Spirit was sharing with me, and I believe this is actually probably the the greatest truth in the whole Bible. I mean, it is the truth that brings freedom. And so um, I hope you guys will tune in right now and uh, hear what the Holy Spirit has to say. Um, again, I believe this is the greatest truth. This is, this is the greatest thing I could ever tell you. Um, and so the Lord spoke to me this morning. He said, everlasting righteousness. And so that takes us to the book of Daniel chapter nine, verse 24. And let me just read this to us. It says, it says, 70 weeks have been declared to your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make an atonement for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness. And, you know, this is so awesome. Let me break this down for us. Um, give me just a second and move this over because it's so awesome. So it says here, it says, um, to make an end of sin. So what does that mean? That means that Jesus, through his sacrifice, he put away sin in his body. Sin was abolished by the sacrifice of Christ and by the satisfaction of Christ's sacrifice in our behalf. And we have been free from all guilt, all condemnation. Therefore, no charge can be brought against us for sin, nor the curse of the law can reach us, nor any sentence of it be executed or any punishment be inflicted upon us for it. For we have been entirely and completely saved from all our sins through the body of Christ. Isn't that awesome? Um, it says what what really stuck out to me is, you know, I know no charge can be brought against us. The Bible says there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. But what I love about this, it says, nor the curse of the law can reach them. And so I think sometimes um, we, be, we think that we're in the curse trying to get free from the curse, but the reality is in Galatians 3.13, it says Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us so that the blessings of Abraham would come upon us through the promise of the Spirit by faith. And so what that means is, is sometimes we can, we can feel like we're under the curse of poverty or under the curse of sickness because we may see that demonstrated in our life. But the reality is if we will wake up to the truth that Daniel's prophecy has been fulfilled in Christ, then, and we will wake up to the reality that our sins have been fully atoned for and no charge can be brought against us when we sin in the flesh. No charge. God does not charge us with that sin because the, our sin in the flesh has been condemned in the body of Christ. That's in Romans chapter 8. And, but also, you know, I hear a lot of language in the Christian circle of, you know, um, being free from generational curses and being free from this curse and, you know, going to God in prayer to be free from this. But the reality is, is it says in Daniel chapter 9 that prophesying the Messiah, that he would come in and redeem us. He would put an end to sin. He would cancel our sin debt and thus the curse of the law would no longer be able to reach us and condemn us and pass sentence and judgment upon us. Wow, isn't that awesome? So all those demands that the law places, if you do this, then God will do that. That can no longer reach you when you understand that Christ is the end of that law for righteousness, to give you everlasting righteousness. Oh my God, this is so awesome. Um, it says, here it says, not only to make an end of sin, he, to make atonement for them, but, uh, and so to make atonement, he finished the transgression. So what does that mean? The transgression, our transgression was laid upon him and he bore it and he carried away. Therefore, it's no longer seen upon us. Wow. Can you get that? God is not seeing sin on you. He said, I did. He said, I, I did not behold iniquity 
in my people. Meaning it was there, but he didn't see it. Why didn't he see it? Because the blood came and brought the atonement, which we know now the blood of Jesus has brought the atonement and has has brought in everlasting righteousness, has brought in everlasting redemption. Praise God. And it says, um, he carried away. It's no longer seen upon us. But here's the also awesome part. Because our transgressions have been fully atoned for in the body of Christ, it says it doesn't have any damning power over you and me as to sentence judgment to us. Isn't that awesome? So where you feel like you're falling short and where you um, maybe keep falling under um, under captivity, under maybe an, an addiction or maybe uh, a sin habit or whatever that is, a weakness in the flesh, know, first of all, that God's not passing that judgment upon you for that sin. Why? Because Jesus atoned for that sin, all of it. At the cross and so that charge is not being laid on you because it was fully laid on him where he bore the um, the judgment and the wrath of God against all your sin and your sin has been taken away and now you stand in the very righteousness of Christ ah praise God um, isn't that awesome what I love to is, is what the Holy Spirit was highlighting to me is is this one thing this is this John 3 16 guys we all know that scripture God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe upon him shall have everlasting life that scripture that we quoted in Sunday school it's true why how is it so radically true that God gave you everlasting life everlasting righteousness before him it's because he loved you he loved you so much. His mercy and his heart was toward you so much that Jesus came and said, I'm coming to take their place. I'm coming to atone for all their sins. I'm bearing the judgment and the punishment for it so it can be taken away. The reproach can be taken away from my people so they can stand in my place and my righteousness before you, Father. Isn't that awesome? It says in Colossians 1.13, it says, God... Our Father rescued us from the dominion of darkness, from the darkness of sin, the darkness of the curse, the darkness of, of what this world would try to wrap us in. God has redeemed us from it, rescued us from it, but he didn't just rescue you from it. He transferred you, so he took you out of that sin, took you out of that sickness and disease, the curse of the law, the demands of the law, he took you out of it, and then he put you into the kingdom of his dear son. And it doesn't stop there. He put you in Jesus. He put you in his righteousness. He gave it to you as a gift. And then it says, in whom we have present tense possession redemption pardon forgiveness we have our redemption the forgiveness of our sins so God is saying I sent Jesus he atoned for your sin I rescued you out when you believed in him I rescued you out of that sin out of that condemnation out of the curse of the law out of sickness and disease out of the reach of that condemning, uh, damning that was that that the enemy had over you, I rescued you out of it. But then I put you in my Son, in His righteousness, where you have redemption, the forgiveness of your sins. And so I believe when we fully understand that we have it, we have possession of it, then we will begin to walk and then see the fruits of it, the fruits of righteousness. We'll begin to see that truth. And so, um, yeah, you know, Matthew 6, uh, 33, Jesus says, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all things are added. So, um, we've read that over and over. I'm, I know me, I've read that so many times and I feel like this morning the Holy Spirit's just drawing that out to us. And so I want to impart it to you today. It's when you believe that Jesus fulfilled the prophecy of Daniel and he was your sacrifice. And in him you have that redemption, the forgiveness of sins, eternal redemption through his blood. 
and that you stand in his righteousness before God. And when you believe that, then you'll un then the reality that the curse of the law can't reach you, you'll live in that because you're like, it can't reach me because I'm in him. And he's delivered me out of that curse and put me in to forgiveness, into pardon, into healing, into provision, into everything, into the her inheritance. And God says, if you'll believe you're righteous by faith, apart from your works, he, God says, then all things are added. See, it's added in righteousness because we can never earn or deserve our inheritance. Never, guys, never. But simply, if we'll believe and receive the gift of righteousness, then God says, with that robe comes your inheritance. So it's like, if you'll simply believe you're righteous by faith, God is just in the, in that robe it's like if you could see yourself god says in isaiah 61:10 it says god has clothed us in a garment of salvation eternal redemption and he's draped a robe of righteousness on us that's Christ's righteousness. And if you could picture on that robe are like pockets, you know, and, he, and, and, and on that robe, it's healing, it's soundness, it's peace, it's joy, it's provision, it's uh, full restoration. It's, it's all the benefits. Guys, it's all in his righteousness. And so if you'll just simply receive that, you'll walk in that. And so I, as I was uh, reading this this morning and studying it, I thought how important it is that every day we confess with our mouth that the curse of the law, the curse of sickness, disease, and the curse of poverty, it cannot touch me because I am in Christ and I am clothed in his righteousness. Therefore, sickness and disease, it cannot reach me. And if it has formed against you and it's in your body or your or you feel like you're under that curse, if you will simply acknowledge this truth that you're righteous by faith apart from your works, that thing will just, it, it, it will flee because it has no power. That thing has power because you, you've taken on the mindset that you're trying to do something in the flesh to get acceptance, to get healing, to get provision, to get the blessings of God. And so that that the strength of sin is the law. And so if you will simply acknowledge that God gave you something you can never deserve or earn and that you have it, you have possession of it today, you have it. Why? Because Jesus purchased it for you. And if you'll acknowledge that, you'll see that sickness go. You'll see that poverty go. You'll see that confusion go because it cannot hang around those who walk in the reality of who they are in Christ. And so, um, be blessed. Um, also real quickly, uh, those who may be uh, in bondage to uh, an addiction or sin, or you feel like this thing, you're, you're trying to get free, but it's just staying, you know, you just get, I don't want to do this, God help me, and you find yourself back in it. Um, I want to speak to you what Paul spoke to the church of Cor Corinth. And uh, in Corinth, the Christians had uh, began to, to go to the temple and began to prostitute themselves. And so how did Paul address them? Um, I believe... This is found in Corinthians. Um, let me just flip over here real quick and read this to you guys because it's it's going to help you because it's such the truth of what I'm saying to you right now. It says, um, but uh, Second Corinthians or First Corinthians chapter six, verse starting verse nine. It says, "Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God?" Well, he's not he's not talking about you because you're righteous. So he's saying the unrighteous, those who haven't placed faith in Jesus, will not inherit the kingdom of God. And do not be see, do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor or, uh, homosexuals, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkens, nor reviles, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And so a lot of times we read this and we go, well, man, I'm in that sin. So I'm, I'm not going to inherit the kingdom of God. I need to kind of work to, to get God to forgive me. That's not what he's saying. Notice he says the unrighteous. And so he, then he begins to tell you what the unrighteous do, not what the righteous do, but what the unrighteous do. And then he says, Verse 11, such were some of you. 
but you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified. You were made whole in the name of the Lord and the Spirit of our God. What's he saying? He's saying, Paul goes to these Christians who are struggling, who are in immorality, who are trapped in this, this immorality. And he's saying, wait a minute, the unrighteous don't inherit the kingdom of God. And he begins to name all the acts of unrighteousness. But then he says, such were some of you. Guys, you were a, an adulterer. You were a fornicator. You were a swindler and a homosexual. You were under that when you were unrighteous. But now you have been washed by the blood of Jesus. You've been sanctified. You've been set apart, redeemed, justified before God. And so if you will awaken to that truth that God is not imputing that sin to you, I know that's, that's wild. Your mind is probably going, how can I wrap my mind around this? I'm in sin and God is not imputing it to me. Yes, it's because of Jesus. It's because Jesus, he bore your sin. He took your punishment and no longer can the curse of the law be imputed to you because it was imputed to him. And you stand in his righteousness, which is a gift. And if you'll receive that truth, it will deliver you from that sin. It will break that bondage. It will destroy that disease in your body. It will deliver you from that curse of poverty. When you, when you awaken to the truth that you are righteous apart from your performance, that it's a gift to you and you cannot deserve or earn it. Guys, it causes you to fall on your face before God. It causes you to raise your hands and glorify Jesus because his blood atoned, not your confession, not, not your works. The blood of Jesus atoned for your sin. And so awaken to that truth. And here, let me continue to read because he, he continues to talk to these, these, these Christians who are, who have fallen into sin, who have fallen back into the, to the old man. And he says, Hey, wait a minute. You're washed. This isn't who you are. You're sanctified. Your sins have been fully atoned for. And in verse 15, he says, And do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Are members of Christ. You, your body is a member of Christ. Even in your sin, you're still a member of Christ. And then it goes down and it says, verse 19, it says, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit whom is in you? Guys, even in your sin, you are the temple of God. The Holy Spirit is within you. You were sealed to the day of redemption, not because you're perfect in the flesh, but because you chose to put faith in what he did in your behalf. And when you did that, it justified you before God. Romans chapter 5 verse 19, through the offense of Adam, we were made sinners but through the obedience of Christ in our behalf, we were made righteous. And um, let, me, let me give you an analogy with this because God gave this to me years ago and it really drives the point. Um, it says, God asked me this question when he was teaching me this many years ago. He said, okay, if you have dough and you, and you, have, you, you make dough and you're going to make a loaf of bread. He says, if you have the dough and you, and you, put, it, and you put it in the oven and, it, and, it, and you, you're going to receive bread, he said, when that bread comes out, can that bread ever be made dough again? I thought, well, no, because even if you put water on it, even if you put, you, you doctor it up, it can never be dough again. It's, it's still going to be like doughy bread, but it's still bread. And God says, so have I made you righteous. You can never be unrighteous before me because you were not made righteous by your performance. You were made righteous. You were justified and you stand before me as if you've never sinned because you placed faith in Jesus and you place faith that his blood atoned for your sin, not your performance. And when you place faith in him, I declared the courts of heaven declared you justified. And we, and God sees you as if you have never sinned. The Bible says our sins are cast as far as the east is 
from the West. And then when we will believe that truth, then we will see the benefits of his righteousness reigning in our life. Isn't that awesome? And so it says that we as believers are to fight the good fight of faith. We are not to fight the devil. He's defeated. He's stripped. The Bible says that the law was nailed to the cross of Christ so that the devil be rendered powerless against us. No longer can he accuse us because in the courts of heaven we're justified. And so um, so everything we receive by God, we have to receive it by faith. Well, how do we receive it by faith? We look to Jesus and we say, there. I, my sins atoned for it. There at the cross, I was healed. At the cross, um, I've received uh, provision. At the cross, I've received uh, the wholeness of Christ. And so everything you need, you look to the cross of Christ and you receive what he did in your behalf by faith. And it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But those who come to him must believe he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so um, we just need to acknowledge, guys, that we are forgiven according to the riches of his grace, that we are healed by the stripes of Jesus, that Christ really did redeem us from the curse of the law, all the demands against us. Christ really did redeem us because he was made the curse so that we would never be under the curse and made the curse and suffer the punishment for breaking the law. Christ fulfilled the law in our behalf so that we can have full acceptance before God and so that we can walk in the sonship, so we can walk in the fullness of who we are in him. And so um, I just really believe that a lot of people are sick. A lot of people are suffering because they're under this cloud of condemnation. They're under this cloud of, uh, I, you know, your performance, your, your performance base, your sin conscious. And God wants to free you from that today. He doesn't want you to be sin conscious. He wants you to be and walk in the liberty and the freedom that you have been fully justified before God because of Jesus. And so um, there's power in the blood of Jesus, guys. There's power in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. And um, so just walk in that truth. Walk in the reality of who you are. Walk in the reality of, of Daniel chapter 9, 24. Christ has really uh, taken away your sin. Uh, and he, the transgression right here in, um, let me just read this real quick. It's in Isaiah 53. It's awesome. It says, um, Isaiah 53, verse 6, it says, He was pierced for our transgressions. Now, our transgressions, that word transgression means our rebellion against God. Our rebellion in the flesh, He bore it. Why did He bear it? So that God would not punish us. Jesus took the punishment in our behalf so that we could be free. Isn't, I mean, it's just the gospel. It's the good news. All we have to do is, is see this in the scripture and believe it. And when you believe it, you'll walk in the reality and the freedom of his righteousness and all the benefits of what he paid for. And, um, and so I just want you guys to receive that today. I want to see you walk in your healing. I want to see you walk in your freedom. I want to see you walk with your head high and enjoying all the benefits and the privileges of being a child of God. And so, um, just don't allow any man, don't allow any thought, don't allow anything to, to come into your heart, into your mind that, that tries to bring a charge against you that says you're under the curse and now you need to get free. No, Christ redeemed you. You are free. You are delivered. You are whole through his sacrifice. Just acknowledge that and receive that. Confess that. And as you do, I'm just going to agree with you right now. Father, I pray for, for my brothers and my sisters right now. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus as they simply receive the righteousness of Christ as a gift and they receive that he bore their sin away and that he carried their disease. Father, I thank you right now. The anointing of the Holy Spirit destroys every yoke 
of disease, every yoke of pain, every yoke of bondage. I say, be gone from the people of God right now in the name of Jesus. And I just say, be healed and be made whole in the name of Jesus, for Jesus has purchased your healing. You are the healed. Don't get to heaven and have God say you were healed on the earth. You just wouldn't receive the gift. Receive that gift. That gift is righteousness by faith and your body will respond to that righteousness and it, your healing will spring forth in the name of Jesus. God bless you guys. I love you. Um, Fight the good fight of faith. Fight to believe God that everything Jesus purchased for you, you have it now. And, uh, and enjoy that reality. Um, as you acknowledge who you are in him and ignore the devil because he's already stripped, he's already defeated, don't talk to him. Just, just as he comes to you with a lying thought, speak out your faith in Jesus. Don't rebuke him, don't talk to him, speak out who you are and what Jesus did for you and know that you trample upon him because you're seated with Christ in heavenly places and as Jesus is before the Father, so are you in this world because you have his very righteousness and as you acknowledge that you will reign in this life god bless you guys love you